Hello there, you lovely drone bashers and pit benders out there. My name is Nick, and today I want to talk to you about a topic that is very relevant to all of us, yet comes with a high amount of uncertainty. And that is, how do you plan the parts for your build? How do you know that a certain motor with a certain propeller um, running on a 3S, 4S setup is going to provide enough thrust that it keeps afloat and in the air and not going to fry up? So um, what do you do? How do you make sure that your drone is going to fly and not fry? And this is what this video should be about, so check it out. When you look at your your setup, um, you need to see which elements are relevant, and that is, well, first the battery, then comes the ESC, then comes the motor, and then comes the propeller. And these four parts are um, going to be responsible for the thrust that is going to be created in the end. And on the one hand, you have the thrust, and on the other, you have the weight, the weight that is pulling you down. So you need to make sure that you are creating enough thrust uh, that you can keep a certain weight in the air and ideally have enough uh, thrust reserves to do whatever you want. If you have a long range setup, you don't need that much additional thrust, but for um, a freestyle or even a racing quad, you need to have lots of reserves. So um, so that's that's in the end what's relevant, these five parts. And there are some you know more common sense numbers that you gain from experience that you know which motor size is usually used with a three inch, four inch, five inch, six, six inch, seven inch setup. Um, like, you know, for the smaller quads, you have uh, like 11 or something to 30, 13 or something. And then with four inch, you have 18 or something. And then with five inch, it's usually 22 or something. And these numbers, um, and I know nowadays, um, more and more motors are coming out that, ha that have a, um, a larger stator size that you usually had in the past. Uh, these are the first two numbers, like the 22, or something or the 20 or something and um, nowadays you you see um, like the with the brother what brother hobby uh, started and then umagod is also going for that now is the 2004 um, motor that is used on five inch um, that was very uncommon in the past and you know stuff like that um, but that is only one one element and and uh, regarding um, the you know it's it's just it's it's experience that you have and you only have a rough number but how do you really know what's what's going on and and I, in this video I want to introduce a tool um, that I think is amazing and it helped me a lot already in the past and I will show it on on the videos when I when I um, show you my builds um, and uh, that tool is called eCalc ch it's a swiss uh, side, uh, site um, app whatever um, and the tool is not very well known it has been around for quite a long time and actually you see that because the ui is rather clunky and not up to date but still um, if you know how to use it it's super it's super relevant and this is what i want to want to show you now um, because with these five values you can get information on how your drone is probably going to fly it's not 100 percent accurate but still it's a, it's a very good um, uh, number to uh, to gather before you do that. So um, let's check out the tool and I'll um, walk you through uh, how to use it. All right, so as you can see, we are now in the browser. Um, and when you reach the page, this is what you are um, welcome with. Um, you can see that there are different calculators for different um, things, like for fixed wings, you also have a center of gravity calculator, um, something for jets, for helicopters, so lots of stuff. But what's important for us are the multi-rotors. And if I click here, um, I am directed to this page. Um, and now the app eCalc is um, basically free to use. However, um, the amount of motors that you can choose from and other stuff is limited. Um, and you can also get a membership, which is like one or two bucks per year. So that's really, you know, nothing to speak of. And I think it's, it's super worth the money. Um, and then you have like everything at your hand, which is also what, what I'm going to show you today. Um, so um, this is where we are. We have um, an area where you can enter the, the information about your drone and then down here you're going to see the results. Um, right now everything is zeroed because we didn't enter any information. That's fine. Um, so let's change that. Um, 
First of all, what we, what we need to know is how much our model is going to weight, how our drone, our setup is going to weight without the parts that are related to uh, the drive, uh, the, what I said before, like battery, ESC, motor and propeller. Um, and I'm just going to use um, my um, Sting frame build uh, as an example for this. Um, and I know that the model weight without um, drive uh, is going to be around 60. So I put in 60 grams here and I say this is without the drive. Um, and I have four rotors. Um, the rest here um, is not really relevant for the information that I'm looking for. Um, and But if you want, you know, if you usually fly at an elevation of, I don't know, on, on the, uh, the Alps or so, where you have an elevation of several thousand feet um, or meters, uh, then you can enter it here um, and also regarding the temperature. Um, but what you can do here is see how much the temperature affects the, the battery, like how much uh, you're going to, how much power and, and um, uh, juice you're going to get from the battery at a certain uh, temperature. Um, all right, but I will leave all that to standards. Uh, the battery that I want to use is, let's go with a 450 ADC, that's fine. Um, I want to use a two cell setup um, and the rest of the fields here are just added automatically. The weight, I mean, you can check with the battery that you, you want to use, but usually these numbers are accurate. So 13 grams, this is per cell. So it has a total weight of 26 grams. Um, the controller type, this is something that is a bit outdated because it doesn't um, uh, support 4-in-1 ESCs as of now. Um, so what it does when you enter like, I don't know, the, the all-in-one board I'm going to be using has 35 amps, so I'm going to use this 30 amps. The rest will be filled out automatically, but you can see um, it expects that one ESC is going to weight 40 grams, which is, you know, of course not what we're going to be having. Um, but there is a trick what you can do because the numbers here are not editable. Um, but after you've made a selection, you can go to custom and then you can change the weight down to, I don't know, one gram. Um, and of course this needs to be calculated in with the rest of your weight, but um, yeah, but then again also, you know, it's not 100% accurate. We're just getting some close numbers um, and that's why one gram is actually the lowest that you can enter. So you need to enter something here. You cannot just type, type uh, zero because then it's gonna, um, you know, then it's gonna um, tell you that it needs to be higher. So I'm just gonna enter one gram. Um, next is the motor and now you have to have some initial idea what you want to use. What I usually do is I go to a company that um, uh, produces like a very a high amount of different kind of motors. So I take an iFlight motor and I just take something here. Let's start with a 2204 uh, size. Um, and yeah, so it takes the information here that it has. What you can also do is that if you, you know, but no, we, we can do that in, in the next step. Let, let's, let's continue for now. Um, so for, for propeller, I know what I want to be using is an uh, HQ prop um, T65 millimeters, and that is a 2.5 inch um, uh, propeller with a 1.5 inch pitch, and it is a two blade set up. Um, and that is basically it. I entered the, the battery, I entered the EC, the motor, the propeller, and the weight. And that's it. And now you see what I, what happens when I click on calculate. This tool calculates like what will I have, what, what can I expect when I uh, do this build and I go out and fly. And what I can see is that I have a certain load that is created, uh, a C rating. So I need to make sure that the battery provides 32 C. Um, if the number is higher than what my um, battery can provide, then, um, well, the battery will not be able to provide that much uh, C. So I will have uh, a lower performance and the battery is not going to like that. So the lifetime is going to be re reduced um, or it's going to inflate. All right. The hover flight time is 4.9 minutes, which is not much. You know, this is just hover flight time. No flying around and doing stuff, just hovering for as long as you can. Um, but 4.9 is not much, so that's not good. Electric power 24, that's like super low, which can be a good thing. Um, but usually it's a sign that something is off. 
temperature is yeah it's not that relevant but usually you see in other areas when there is a problem not the temperature the thrust weight ratio is 2.0 which means it's gonna it's gonna rise in the air but it's not gonna be fun to fly um, and also specific thrust I never really <laughs> to be honest I did not understand it if any one of you knows what it means then please tell me um, but also it has not been too relevant for me yet um, all right so this is what I can see, and now I can see that I will have a, um, a total amp draw at full throttle of 15 amps, which is very low, um, because we have, like, this is also per um, per ESC, and we have four times this, so that's fine. Oh, actually, is it? Um, no, it's not. This is the total amp draw. I'm sorry. This is the total amp draw, um, so it's 14 amps, but we have a 35 amps ESC, so that's, that's going to be fine. Um, and then you can also see that there are remarks and it tells me that uh, your motor is too big So I should better be using a smaller motor. So let's try that out. What do we have? We have 1105 and um, Let's just take this with 6,000 6, kV and we see now that hmm All right, we still get we should use a smaller motor and so let's do that. What is smaller? What we have here is 1103 and we see, okay, um, the KV numbers are higher and let's just take the 8000 KV, KV. And now we see that the warning is gone and the thrust weight ratio has increased to 2.4, which is a good thing. Um, we see the hover fly time is a bit higher, still nothing too fancy, but better. Um, we see the, um, the amp draw 15, that's, that's fine. And the, the load for the battery, that's also fine. Um, Let's see what, what else we can get out of it. So let's now go with uh, the 10,000 uh, kV version because I know kV, that's the, let, let's see if I remember correctly, that's the, um, the, uh, the, how much, um, how much RPM it takes to generate one volts of energy. Um, and, Usually, what what you can say that it's 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 related to the RPM, the the, the like how fast it's gonna turn, and the higher the KV, uh, the faster the faster it's gonna turn. So let's go with uh, ten thousand and click on go. And okay, okay, I see we're getting somewhere. And now we have three point four uh, thrust to weight ratio. That this this is probably gonna be um, flying okay. Um, it's not going to be super beast, but it's going to be flying okay. And we see a hover flight time of 6.9 minutes. So, that, you know, if you fly a bit more um, uh, acrobatic, it's going to be going down to 4 to 5 probably. But still, you know, for a 2.5 inch drone, which is what that is, because that's what we entered here with a with a propeller size, that's actually pretty good. Um, and this way you can just play around, you know, you can, you can check what will happen if I go up to a 3S um, battery and I click on calculate and then, whoa, suddenly I see my, okay, thrust weight ratio had gone up to 4.9, which is amazing. This, this, this seems to be good. But electric power went, went up and the load is going to going up to uh, almost 90C and uh, the amp draw is, is really high. Um, and also we can see that the, um, the, the, um, the motor uh, limits uh, with, with which are um, officially 60 watts uh, are exceeded with uh, to 80 watts so that's that's probably going to be a problem and th the motor will not like that so the risk of a motor failure is there so this is this is too much so this is more like something for a um, for a 2s setup but let's see if we if we go down with the kV here take a lower uh, kV um, we see that it's, you know, the numbers now look better. We have 3.6. We have uh, still a warning here that um, the motor voltage is um, higher than what is uh, expected from the motor. So maybe we should go with a, a bit bigger motor. Let's take the 6500. Uh, it says it's too big. Let's see what we have here. The 1105 maybe. Yeah, yeah, that looks better. That looks better. 4.0 is gonna, not going to cause enough thrust. So, yeah. But just want to show you, this is this is what I usually do when I plan my builds. I go into this tool and I just play around with, I have in mind, okay, like for the, for the, um, 
for the sting frame I definitely want to use a 2S setter because I want to squeeze the battery like in between the side plates. So um, this actually is a number which is pretty good and while I was checking out different motors I found a motor um, that is rather newly released that um, much better fits my needs and that is the Flywoo Robo uh, 2.1 1202.5 with 11,500 kb and let's take a look at that and this provides me with a thrust weight ratio of 4.6 which is really really good um, and the hover fly time is 7.7 .7, which is also great with just a 450 milliamp battery um, and it tells me that uh, the it, it's close to the limits of the motor with an amp draw of almost 10 and it says that only 9.6 are allowed but then again that's for 15 seconds and I, I cannot imagine when I ever are going to be flying more than 15 seconds on full throttle so I, I'm not that concerned about that and usually also the the numbers that the manufacturer gives are a little you know um, pessimistic um, so this is something that I feel is going to be flying very well and this is what I was going to be using for my maiden flight. Uh, I already ordered the motors and I can wait to, to test them out. Alright, um, then the other information you can see down here, um, you can check it out. Basically, most important stuff is what I said, are these numbers here that you can also see in the images. You can then see what the total all-up weight is going to be, um, what, what uh, current values you will have to expect for the motor on a hover then on a maximum also these numbers you can also find an rage estimator although that is something that i feel is again more for fixed wings i didn't really make use of that too much but still maybe some of you can get some interesting information out of that what i mainly mainly use is uh you know just entering uh these numbers here and then get a rough idea about what's going to work out with which thrust weight ratio and then um, I, I do my maiden with that setup. Um, all right that's that's basically it that's that's what I wanted to show you. Um, this tool I think it is very underrated and, and not many people know about it but I think it's great and it does help me a lot and you're gonna see it you're gonna be seeing it a lot in my videos um, and I hope this was helpful for some of you um, and I yeah I hope you got some information back out of it. Um, if you want to know more about my builds that I'm going to be making and the projects that I'm working on go check out my channel and subscribe and hit the bell icon and watch Whatnot. and I'm looking forward to showing you more builds that are using this uh, during the construction phase mainly soon so stay tuned uh, looking forward to seeing you next bye bye